So Doc Holliday has left Georgia, fleeing probably across Florida, coming up through Galveston, and on his way into Texas, he's able to make a visit, perhaps, with his uncle Jonathan Mackey, who has moved from Griffin, and he's there in Brenham, outside of Brenham, Washington County, Texas, and has a big plantation. And then he heads north to Dallas, um, and it doesn't look like he's just wandering when he gets to Dallas, because there's, um, there's an associateship waiting for him there. Would you like to tell us who his partner was there? John Seeger, mm -hmm. who had been a, a, another Georgian and uh, well known to John Stiles Holiday. Actually had a practice across a practice the county across, line. Yes, yeah. just right across the county line from each other. So uh, it's my assumption that uh, John Stiles uh, helped to negotiate this. But it's, uh, it's also true that Seeger had uh, posted advertisements for a partner uh, for, was two years earlier. Yeah, I think so, in the Philadelphia yeah. papers. Yeah. So he was looking so, for somebody. So. But so anyway, there was a, but there's that Georgia connection again. Right. So Doc Holliday, is, he's not, he doesn't <coughs> wander the West with no family and no friends. And, uh, but uh, then we get to the, to the point where uh, well, now hold on. He goes into practice with Dr. Seeger. Yes, yes. And he wants to set himself up as a proper gentleman. Gentleman. Yeah, and he wants to be respectable. So he does the things. He says later, it, Holiday said of himself later, that he did the things that would have made him a respectable person. He joins the congregation of a local um, Methodist, Methodist church. Methodist church. His mother's congregation. Um, his mother's denomination. Mm -hmm. And then he also attends meetings of the local... Temperance Society. Temperance Society <laughs> fighting against public drunkenness, which just seems so hilarious for Doc Holliday. But these are the things that you do when you're trying to make a name for yourself in a community. So for a little while, he's doing what he needs to do, and it looks like, once again, he's set for a prosperous professional career. But he has, he has a problem. He has a habit that gets in the way of his becoming that, pro that respectable man. What's his bad habit? He's a gambler. He's a gambler. Now, interestingly, gambling was, it was a very respectable thing to do back in Georgia. That southern heritage of his, mm -hmm. uh, southern men gambled, and the mayor of Atlanta actually owned the biggest saloon in town, and all the locals would get together to gamble and play cards and try to figure out how to get the Yankees out of town. And so he brings that with him, but life's a little different in Dallas. Dallas has laws against, they called it, um, um, hmm, I just forgot what the name was. Uh, um, games of chance in in a saloon, basically. So, in a house of spiritus liquors, there was a law against playing at games of chance in a house of spiritus liquors because everybody knew in these little boom towns, if you got card playing and liquor and young men together, trouble was going to happen. So they tried to divide it. So the saloons would be set up with the bar at the front and the card room at the back. And so you could do, you could play cards or you could drink, but you couldn't do both in the same place at the same time. You know, the movies always show them sitting around that round table and they've got mm -hmm. their whiskey in their hand, their guns on the table, they've got the cards laid out, never happened because the, the laws were against that. So you could drink, but you had to leave your drink up front. You could go back and play cards, but you had to leave your cards or your poker chips or whatever back at the table. You couldn't cross over. And that must have seemed ridiculous to Holiday because the very first time he gets into trouble with the law at West, it's not for shooting somebody, it's not for robbing a bank, mm -hmm. robbing a train, he gets arrested for playing Keno. Keno. What, Keno, which is the game that you play when you eat breakfast in Las Vegas now, <laughs> you know, where the, the, you, you guess which ball is going to show up next. Yeah. There's not even any skill to it, but he was playing Keno in a house of spiritus liquor. So what happens and to he him? Signed, uh, he uh, went to court for that and... Uh, Signed a bond for a hundred dollars, and uh, and he, by this time his uh, his partnership with Dr. Seeger had uh, broken up. And this may have been one of the things that broke it up. That he gets could have been one of the things that that, that broke it up. And uh, uh, but Doc immediately after he leaves Seeger, he establishes an office above the Dallas County Bank. Which is a difficult time to be establishing a practice or any other kind of business because the country is in its very first depression. Depression. And yeah. following the Civil War, and money is scarce everywhere. And so here, here's young Dr. Holliday, and he's what, 23 years old now? He's trying to establish himself in a business. It's an expensive business. And to stay in business, he's got to do a lot of that fancy work. Oh, we didn't mention his awards. 
Um, yeah. Yeah. Go At ahead. the state fair, he was uh, received first place for uh, what in three categories. Right. And for uh, dental work. For dental work. So he was. He was not just. Uh, he was skilled at what he did. Well, and, and people need to know, dentistry at the time, any doctor could pull a tooth. He wasn't a tooth puller. Yeah. A dentist did more what we would consider cosmetic <laughs> dentistry now. He did. He had been trained in crown and bridge work. So mm -hmm. he worked in fine metals, he worked in gold, he worked in porcelain. But to pay for his work, you had to have money. And so in a depression, that's a bad business to be in for him. And one of the places you can get that uh, money you need is gambling. Well, he had to, I mean, people had to be able to pay him. Yeah. So his business did not do well. Mm -hmm. um, and so he takes a side trip up to another town, which we've learned about this because of something he himself wrote. Well, he had had a, he had a couple of appearances. He was indicted for gambling in Dallas in May, appeared in court in, uh, later that month, and, and uh, in addition to that, he paid poll taxes and property taxes in Dallas. And Dr. Seeger's office burned shortly thereafter. So, uh, and so that summer he leaves uh, for, from Dallas to Denison. And Denison is an interesting town. It's north of, da of Dallas. It's up on the Red River. And it's just like the last, it was established actually as the last town before you got to the Indian Territory because um, of a new technology and that was refrigerated rail cars. So always before you'd had to herd cattle and take them on the hoof to put them on trains to take them to the east to be slaughtered. And these refrigerated rail cars came on so you could slaughter the beef, pack them on refrigerated cars, and then get them quickly to the east. And this was a booming business. And for a year, it made Dallas the last boom town of Texas. Even though a depression was going on, this business was flourishing. And so the town was filled with young men from all over Texas who'd come to get a job. And so now there's people who can pay for dental work. Pay for dental work. Yeah, so he's up there. But they also have a famous street there called Skiddy Street. They called it Skid Row. And mm -hmm. it was the back street, the muddy little back street where all of the saloons were. Oh, and you know, I didn't mention they're in Dallas. They had 40 saloons in one mile. Mm -hmm. I mean, imagine your town and it's got 40 McDonald's in one mile. <laughs> That's a vast amount of anything. So these were drinking towns. And so Dennis and the same thing. But after a year, and we don't know of any, we don't know of any trouble that he got into. And it was he himself who mentioned having been in Denison. Um, but after a year, Denison went out of business because the refrigerated rail car company had to shut down, and again the depression. So he ends up back down in Dallas. That reminds me of something that's a little off the track here, but it, 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 <laughs> you might find interest. Uh, in fact, Jack Mackey mentions this. <clears throat> Denison is uh, possible because of new technology, mm -hmm. and it's uh, it and it takes things in a different direction. There's this increased uh, need for beef back in the east, and so refrigerated cars was one way to get it there. Uh, these weren't the long drives to Dodge City and uh, mm -hmm. Abilene and uh, Ellsworth, but this, but they, they they were beginning to deal with that. One of the one of the interesting things that Jack pointed out is uh, uh, that harks back a little ways is that in addition to being a cattleman in partnership with uh, uh, the King family, the famous King family, the family in Texas. Uh, he also ran had a shipping industry in the Gulf of Mexico. And this is Lee Smith we're talking about, or Jack? No, no, no. The Jack says that Jack said that uh, uh, Jack Mackey said yes. that he uh, uh, that he uh, that Mifflin Kennedy um, had uh, a shipping line that ran to all of those Gulf Coast places like Pensacola and uh, exactly and, and Apalachicola and even in the little places like. Uh, uh, the smaller point, you know, places that uh, we don't we don't now think of the Gulf Coast as being the business area. It's it's a vacation spot to most people now. But again, Galveston. It was New York, and there was Galveston. These were the two biggest ports mm -hmm. in the country, and so all of these businesses and the shipping went all along there. So this is a great place but to since, be, being in Texas. But since uh, Mifflin Kennedy is important in the in the story of the Wyatt Earp. Uh, as uh, because of 
his son's episode with uh, killing a woman in uh, Dodge City. Uh, Mifflin Kennedy's connection to uh, is a is, is a tangential one, but it's still a kind of interesting that it shows how the industrial connections were being made. Well, and it shows Doc Holliday's world. Yeah. That things that were going on around him. Again, not this picture that we have of him just wandering, shooting people all over From the place. From one saloon to the yeah, next. Yeah, no, so. he's he's in business. He's trying to support himself like anybody does. He has a business and it's dentistry, and so he's trying to support himself with that. Um, and 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 yet he's living in definitely the Wild West because the Sioux Indians are on the warpath, and Jesse James is robbing trains. So there's a lot of excitement out there. But he is trying to make a living. He doesn't know he's going to end up Doc Holliday from the OK Corral. He's just a dentist out west who's That's trying right. to, and he's 23. He's trying to get started in life. So Dennison doesn't work out for him. So he goes back down to Dallas, and it looks like he arrived shortly around New Year's. Anything exciting going on in Dallas that New Year's? <laughs> the uh, We think he's in Dennison as late as probably uh, uh, September. Right. But... Uh, he gets into a little altercation. Uh, back in Dallas. Back in Dallas with a, with a saloon keeper named Charles Austin. And who goes by, they call him in the papers Champagne Charlie, which Champagne actually, Charlie. there was a very popular saloon song at the time called Champagne Charlie, and you can Google it and listen to the fun <laughs> melody that it had. So a Champagne Charlie was a, a clever well, name for this guy, not that, he was, not that he was very champagne himself, <laughs> but Charlie Austin, who was a saloon keeper, and the saloon was across the street from City Hall. Not a good place to get into get an into altercation. Yeah, no. So what happens? Well... Uh, Doc finds himself arrested uh, uh, and charged with assault with intent to murder. Not and a good thing. And Charlie Austin is also arrested. Yeah. But he's let go. What would be the difference between Charlie Austin as a saloon keeper <laughs> and Holiday as a customer? Well, he's uh, he's the proprietor of the establishment. So he's protecting his property. Exactly. Is the, is the argument that it would be made? Yeah, and they were supposed to police their own place. Because they exchanged shots, is the way the papers put it. And there. and we have no idea what they exchanged shots over. Oh yeah. But what? Charlie Austin gets let go because he's the owner and trying to police his place, and Holiday gets arrested. And the newspapers make it seem like a really light thing. The newspaper says that uh, Dr. Holliday and Charlie Austin exchanged shots with each other and added something about it added to the fireworks of the occasion, you know, um, and like it's nothing. But mm -hmm. it wasn't nothing. Holliday gets arrested. Yes. Charged with intent to commit murder, murder. which is 27 years in the state pen. And he goes to trial. And he goes to trial, and he's acquitted in the case. And it's a, the trial is at their beautiful new county courthouse, so it's a big deal. <laughs> he has some witnesses called in. One of his witnesses that stands for him is a saloon keeper. So it's telling you something about the kind of society he's keeping now. Yeah, he didn't call in Do Dr. Seeger. He called in a saloon keeper. Yeah. So these are his friends now. So he's, he's definitely at his 23 years old, not taking good paths here. His gambling is leading him down bad paths. Um, and so he's acquitted in this case. And so you'd think now finally, be done with this. You've learned your lesson, start over again fresh. And now he just disappears from Dallas. Yeah, he uh, was finally on the old Keno charge. He was fined later. In well, that spring. was interesting yeah. that they put that they put uh, the they, trial for that out a year, like yeah. they were putting well, him on probation. Was, he, if they find him ten dollars for that. Yeah, but they put it out a year, and, saying, uh, you know, get your act together, young doctor. In Holiday. April, in April, the the newspapers were still uh, put, had a little note that the marshal of Dallas has made a raid on Keno, so he's still they're still going after Keno. <laughs> well, it's an easy one to arrest the people yeah. for, and they think it's done. Uh, so he's he's suddenly now gone from te gone from Dallas, and he goes from being this young man with a bright career who gets into trouble in South Georgia, and then he ends up in Dallas as a young man with a bright career who gets into trouble over gambling, which is looks like it's becoming more than a pastime. He's not a sporting man; he's a gambling addict. A gambling addict is somebody who gambles not to make money; they make money to gamble. So if he's working, he's making money so he can gamble with it for the thrill of gambling. My opinion on this is if you do something again and again to the point that it's ruining your life, 
you're addicted to it. And he shows the symptoms of that. So mm -hmm. this is this is an addiction of his. And so he's not the glorious sporting man at this point. But also, now he leaves Dallas. Instead of taking this opportunity to reform himself, now he's got yet another, he keeps trying. <laughs> but now he has another chance and instead he leaves and he has some adventures in West Texas that really look like the beginnings of the, the end of Doc Holliday. And I had to wonder, was it about this point that he did find out that he had this cough that he had was consumption? Because we watch him go down so fast. And you have to think, is this a 23-year-old young man who's been given a devastating diagnosis? And now he's just, his life is, is in such turmoil now. You want to talk about some of the adventures that he had or difficulties that he had in West Texas? Well, he... Or even before West, he, Fort Griffin. He uh, ends up, we don't know all of his movements, uh, but he ends up eventually uh, in mid-75, he's in, he's in Fort Griffin. Where he gets arrested. Which is a, another another boom town, uh, kind of a it, on the on the site of a, a military uh, base. That's yeah, an old Buffalo Trail yeah. town. And that uh, uh, the uh, and he gets a, a uh, in, in June he gets arrested along with a man named Lynch, mm -hmm. Hurricane Lynch. Bill Martin. Hurricane Bill, famous Hurricane Bill, Bill Martin. Martin. And Curly. Some and the Curly. Temptation, and the temptation is to say, it's Curly Bill. Oh, we all want it to be we Curly Bill. We all want Bill. it to be Curly Bill, but Curly was a very common nickname. Obviously, so. but it would have been fun, uh, but he gets arrested for gambling. So he's just left and now he's arrested, even in the, even in the little, and, and Fort and, Griffin is not an upstanding community. You yeah. mentioned it's got the fort up on the, on the bluff there, and it overlooks um, the creek, um, and it is a pathway for the I mean, for the cattle trade. Exactly, well. and and they call it the flat down below, and it's an outfitting point for buffalo trails and then for the cattle trails. And it is a rough town. It's a rough wild west town. So even in a rough wild west town, he's getting arrested. But again. he's moving up. He's uh, getting arrested this time for playing cards. He, he and Mike Lynch were uh, <laughs> so uh, he's moved up from fine up. ten. You know, he was he was indicted for. Uh, uh, Play, he and Mike Lynch were indicted for playing cards. And they leave town. And so... Alias Capius follows Alias up, Capius follows in trying to Tom find Green him. County, which is, which is where Fort Concho is located. And uh, then uh, he uh, eventually he gets into additional trouble. And this, this is, uh, in, is in March of 18... 76 where there is a killing there in Fort Griffin in Fort Griffin so he's already now traversed from Fort Concho down to San Antonio and there was a blues blues saloon or something there's a family no, there that, that's a little that, that takes place just a little later I believe. okay go ahead then because uh, uh, he hadn't re he hadn't reconnected with Oh, Kate, got, got it, got it. Okay, so we're back up in Fort Griffin about eight. And he's, so he's just wandered getting into trouble he's now. He's getting in, in Fort and, and uh, the, the incident we had we don't have very much on the incident, but the person killed was a black soldier, a buffalo soldier, buffalo soldier stationed at uh, at, at, at Fort Griffin, away from his post without permission. away from his post without uh, permission, likely in one of the saloons, and uh, most likely, and uh, he is uh, uh, shot and killed, and uh, uh, by persons unnamed by persons unnamed but doc leaves town so immediately and this is the interesting point immediately after that shooting doc is gone doc he's, is gone he's out of there and when he next appears he's in denver colorado shortly thereafter and he has a new name yep. he's gone he's taken an alias he now, now why do you take an alias because you're running from something you're running from something alias. and the name he takes is tom i mean john mackey Tom Mackey. He goes by Tom Mackey. His he goes uncle's by Tom name. Mackey. Takes his favorite but there are name. also there are also letters that summer uh, for a John Mackey in the in the Jacksboro Hotel, which in, is which is his own first name. Uh, yeah. So his alias is so, Tom Mackey. Yeah, and Tom Mackey. He is in the so the uh, 
this is a this is a point of of, of considerable confusion uh, in the in in the in the chronology because we, we don't have a good he's he's using aliases he's not uh, uh, but we do think that he uh, and there are are questions about whether or not he went to, up to um, uh, Deadwood during this period, that, that he went to Cheyenne and then Deadwood. Right. And, um, and, the, and the interesting point to remember is that he's not famous. Nobody's nobody taking, knows who he is. Nobody, he can travel pretty much yeah, he's, anywhere. He's not trying to be found, yeah, and nobody's yeah. taking note of him. So finding him during this point of time is really difficult. But so he he's wandering up around those areas, and even in even in Denver, he gets into trouble. So when he's trying to hide, you want yep. to tell about that story? Well, he uh, went to uh, work. For a time at, for Charlie Foster, mm -hmm. uh, living under two aliases, John, Tom Mackey or John J. Mackey, and uh, then there is an incident in a, a, a knife fight that takes place. Interesting that it's a knife fight. A knife fight. What does he have with him? The hell, bitch. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, they. Uh, and shortly thereafter, uh, he departs Denver. He's smart about getting out of places. Yeah, he does that. Quickly. And the next thing we know, uh, there are there are, there's court activity back in Fort Griffin, uh, and apparently I'm not sure they were all around at that that point. I think the. Uh, the Bud Ryan incident could have taken place as late as November. So the Bud Ryan is the is the knifing situation, the knifing situation. in Denver, and that's interesting because he t Bud Ryan tells that story later on himself. So he doesn't die; he gets cut up. He gets cut up, and he and he mentions it himself later. Call it, it's referred yeah. to in the papers as Saturday Night's Affair. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and uh, so and. The Rocky Mountain News says that the accused was fined thirty dollars, but they don't say who the, the the accused was. Right, because again, he's not famous <laughs> if, uh, for that incident. If that's the incident. If that's the incident, exactly. Uh, so anyway, he gets. We, but we know about the Bud Ryan thing because but it's on mentioned, December first, there's himself. an unclaimed letter for T. S. Mackey in at, Denver. In Denver, yeah. we know he was there. So, and. Uh, so it turns out that uh, uh, Doc's on the move again. Some believe he went to visit some holiday relatives in Kansas. Yeah, and we don't have actually, There's the family doesn't have any information on that except that, the fam that there was family that lived in Kansas, so he could have stopped by there yeah. um, at Laclede, Kansas, which is about 100 miles north of the rail. But I want to tell you that Doc was... Uh, Moving about quite a lot, he ended up as he was arrested uh, for three times for gambling in Dallas again. Well, and that's the point. He gets when it, you know he comes back down to Fort Griffin, makes his way back to Dallas, and again he's arrested. It was it five times total in two weeks. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. So he has a he has a real problem. But and, he also is in. He returns to Denison possibly. And then gets into an altercation with a man named Henry Kahn. Oh, in Breckenridge. In Breckenridge. Which is about 100 miles west of Dallas. And Breckenridge was a brand new town in Albany County. Or is, it's uh, Shack Shackleford. Yeah, well, Shackleford. Uh, Shack um, anyway, it's out there. there you go. <laughs> it's about 100 miles west of Dallas, and it was a new town. They had a cleared space. Well, it wasn't very clear. It had mesquite on it where they were going to be building a courthouse. And mostly it was saloons. And so they were celebrating the 4th of July in Breckenridge. And they'd announced that this was going to be a big celebration. So sports, gamblers from all around came into Breckenridge to party. And he meets Henry Kahn. Henry Kahn was, uh, was kind of uh, uh, the rogue member of the Kahn family who were big in the, 
dry goods right. back in Dallas. Emmanuel Con. Emmanuel Con. Yeah, owned what, what became one of the biggest stores in Dallas. In the biggest stores in yeah. Dallas. Yeah. And, uh, but the altercation initially uh, was, I mean, Doc using a cane. He attacked Con with a cane. Which is very interesting. When you, when you use a cane, you're not trying to kill somebody. No. You're trying to defend yourself. And, uh, but then Khan shot Doc. Right. And uh, uh, apparently it was serious because word got back to Georgia and uh, George Holiday. His cousin, one of his cousins. One of his cousins, John Stiles, one of John his Stiles' son. son uh, goes to uh, uh, Fort Worth to take care of him. And so Holiday, evidently he's shot, he's badly injured. He, he is, is taken to Fort Worth. Transported back to Fort Worth. Back to Fort Worth. You could get to Fort Worth on a train from Atlanta. So George Holiday is there. And this is a family story that George, and then George's name shows up in the local newspaper. Yes, so, right. you know, we can verify that story that he was there. And nurses him back to health. And, um, the family story is that wanted to take him back to Georgia, you know, now that he survived, wants to take him home, and he refuses to go home. And it may have been the problem with his father, or it may have been that now that he's got himself into so much trouble, he didn't, he wasn't if, comfortable going back. There's some indication that uh, that uh, John wanted, I mean, that, that Henry, his father, wanted, his father wanted him to, to bring him home. Of but, course. And, uh, but, uh, then, you know, he recovers from, from all of that. But right. instead of going back to Dallas, he ends up going back up to Fort Griffin, Texas. Fort Griffin, Texas. And where he, he's going to meet a couple of people. One is a woman from his past. By the name of Kate Elder. Now she's going by now Kate, Kate Elder. Elder. Okay, so she's there. We don't know. She may have been an actress. She may have been a dancer. Or she may have been a prostitute. We don't know what she was doing there. But Kate is well, there. Well, considering her company, <laughs> who, who, who she arrived with originally, uh, I, I think it's pretty clear what part of what they, profession she was following at that time. They were working because, girls. <laughs> because uh, the, uh, she arrived in, in, in Fort Griffin with Tom Sherman, who had run a dance hall in, uh, in Dodge City. Right, and they didn't just dance. And, 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 and they didn't just dance. And then sweet... And, 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 uh, uh, and a Sweetwater, too. Sweetwater. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, and she picked up the name Elder uh, with the associate, uh, associated with a friend of, uh, of, uh, of Sherman's, whose name was, J, I think, J.S. Elder. Right. And uh, uh, before, and that's why, I think that's why Wyatt Earp always referred to her as Kate Fisher. Because I think she was after, she, after because her Because that's when name, she was she in was Wichita, Fisher. when when Kate was in Wichita mm -hmm. and working as a sporting girl, she, uh, uh, that that's when Wyatt knew her. So we always had that other name. And then she picks up the name Elder. So she's there in Fort Griffin, but there's something, there's somebody he <clears throat> meets there in Fort Griffin who changes his life really for the better and maybe for the worse. The biggest change in his life was a gentleman he met there. Yes, he meets. So uh, there's a little question about exactly when they met, but he met a young man named Wyatt Earp. What's Wyatt who, doing at Fort Griffin? Well, there are d different stories. Uh, the, the 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 one that Lake tells is he was uh, uh, looking for a uh, a a bank rob or a train robber. In, who had been a, and he was looking for him in, in which had taken the, the train robbery had taken place that, in was Kansas. Was that Rudabaugh? Dave Rudabaugh. Dave He's Rudabaugh. Dave Rudabaugh. Was was, yes, I think, and also maybe he might have been looking for Rourke or Rourke too. And then there's a story also that he was there looking for some stolen cattle. So he's like a yeah. detective of stolen yeah. cattle. So he's he's there. Well, and, and it, he had been a police officer in Dodge, Dodge City, City, but Dodge City goes through its quiet times when the drives are not happening, the cattle drives. So then you got to make money elsewhere. Yeah. So he's down and, there uh, trying to. And make he some money. and he went to uh, Fort Worth, 
and spent some time with his brother James, who was in uh, in in Fort Worth before he goes on out west. And Wyatt is a very upstanding police officer with nary any trouble in his life before this point, correct? Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> he'd had a few colorful incidents in his in his past, but uh, he was. Uh, he was well, I mean, well regarded as a police officer uh, in, in in Wichita when he was uh, on the up force there. He was thought very highly of until he got into an altercation in a, during an election. Right, right. Where uh, the uh, one of the, can the, the Mike Meir uh, was a marshal and he was challenged by Bill Smith. And Smith uh, uh, got into a quarrel because he was accusing Mir of uh, doing favors for the Earps and of, and and, the, and being uh, doing some questionable illegal things with the Earps. One of which was that uh, uh, that they were not regularly raiding uh, uh, James Earps' wife's. Uh, house of prostitution. Which is an interesting point about Wyatt Earp that his family were known for running bordellos and, yeah. or policing them and that Wyatt had, had been in that line of work for some time. Yeah, back, back to Illinois. Yeah. And uh, and uh, it's uh, so and I think I, I think that's where actually I think uh, uh, that it's likely that the connection between uh, what is uh, between James and Bessie, mm -hmm, or, his wife, who took place in Missouri. I think that they're probably because uh, James was in bad health, and he was going attending or going to a veterans hospital in St. Louis, and. Uh, <coughs> it may have been where they first... Uh, it may have been where Kate yeah. first ran into yeah, them, yeah, too. Yeah, so yeah. there's some interesting parts of the story. So in other words, this gentleman, Wyatt Earp, that he meets, do you want to talk about the famous, Stuart Lake's famous version of that story about meeting at Johnny Shaughnessy's place? Well, uh, Shaughnessy is a, is a fascinating character, and he's around forever. He, you know, he's, he's a part of their history. And he ran one of the better-known saloons in in uh, in, uh, in Fort Griffin and, and may have himself had a, a a romantic relationship with Lottie Dino the yeah. famous lady gambler in Fort Griffin too yeah. it's one of her stories but that's a side story <laughs> so well, so so Holiday is in Shaughnessy saloon supposedly and he's in the back room playing cards and in and he, comes Wyatt Earp and talks to Shaughnessy yeah and uh, look, he's looking for some help, looking for somebody to help yeah. him trail these things. And Shaughnessy says, "Well, why don't you talk to this guy in the back? I've got this Doc Holiday guy. They're calling him Doc now because he's a dentist. I've got this Doc Holiday back here. He plays cards with everybody. He might have some info. Might have some info for you. So that very meaningless little relationship. Yep. And now, what is the attraction between these two? Do you think? I don't know. I, did, I don't know that it was sealed by just that meeting. I think." Uh, there is also a story that he, that in that same general time frame, this is when uh, Doc is supposed to have in the, left uh, Fort Griffin again and gone to Laredo, and then from Laredo upriver uh, to uh, uh, Eagle Pass, where. Across, across the river from Piedras Negras, Piedras okay, Negras. which is in Me Mexico. And, uh, and, the, and the story is that he, he worked in uh, uh, gambling in, in Eagle Pass, but he also went across the river. There was a military uh, post, Mexican military post across the river, and supposedly he went across the river and did dental work with the, in, on that Mexican post while they were at the, there. And the, he's, he gambled at a, a, a saloon owned by a man named Blue Vivian. There you go. That's the one. Well, and this was a story told by Kate, 
but she didn't talk about Blue Vivian, but she talked about going across the border. So you got these little bits of stories yeah. coming from different people, and they all fit nicely together. So he's had some adventures down there, trying to do Saloon, dentistry. The saloon's called Old Blues. Love that. And uh, and that's a fam that's a story told the, by the Vivian family, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, he stayed. They stayed at the National Hotel. Then they went back to supposedly cases to San Antonio, and then west to Fort Clark, where he runs into Wyatt Earp again. So he may have seen him several times, but according to the Shaughnessy. Then north to, uh, eventually they will, uh, you know, they will go uh, up to uh, uh, Dodge City. Well, let's that. let's hold off before we get to Dodge. So they're in Fort Griffin, and he meets he meets Wyatt somehow or other. Um, and that isn't where their relationship is sealed. And Wyatt talks about that later, what it was that really made him become a, a loyal friend of Doc mm -hmm. Holliday's. But there's a story that supposedly happens in Fort Griffin that he, that Holliday knifes a gambler. Yeah, the story involved a man named, supposedly named Ed Bailey. And, and in the movie Tombstone, we see the story set in Prescott, <laughs> But they Arizona. put it in Prescott, Arizona. They put it into Prescott just to give you a good way to meet Holiday. And it's the famous line, why Ed Bailey, I, I, aren't we friends anymore? Uh, and so he knifes him to death. I, I don't think I could later. bear it. I don't think I could bear it. <laughs> yeah. Such a great line, such a great movie, but you know, sliding history around there. So supposedly the story is that they get into a fight in the saloon and that he knifes Ed Bailey and Ed Bailey dies and the locals come after him and uh, they've got him, they're holding him in a hotel. Yeah, and this is the time when the, uh, when uh, uh, Fort Griffin is being, uh, uh, they're, they're also, in addition to the local law enforcement, there's also a, a, a substantial little vigilante group uh, uh, yes. that's, that's in, in place. John Larn and the, uh, and the yes. And they, that's a whole other story, yeah. So they've got the vigilante group, and supposedly they're going to come after Holiday. They're going to hang him, or he's going to be gone, taken off to jail. In the meantime, he's being held in a in a hotel room. Right. And so Kate comes to the rescue. Yeah, the story Kate, told uh, on her. Kate tells us. I mean, they tell the story that uh, <clears throat> that Kate. Uh, well, Kate denies the story, but Wyatt Earp told the story. Well. And, a uh, newspaper quoted Wyatt Earp as saying it, but we and Wyatt Earp later said that that newspaper man said lots of things that he never said. Yeah. So according to a San Francisco newspaper story, according to them, Wyatt Earp said that Kate lit a fire. Lit a fire in a in a, 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 a like a, a shed, shed behind, the behind the a hotel. And she helped Holiday escape. And, and, but Kate herself said. That's ridiculous. A little woman of 90 something pounds could not have done what they're saying I did. Didn't it have to happen. And we found absolutely no proof of the story. And we've also found no picture of of Kate at 90 something pounds. <laughs> hey, that's not nice. <laughs> However, no trace of the story, and, and, and talking, when I spoke with the, the researchers there in Shackleford County and the people looking for the, they all say the same thing. Well, supposedly somebody said there was a file that got stolen, but that's the same story you hear all around the country when there's some old story that you can't mm -hmm. find any proof. It's always in supposedly some file that got stolen. So anyway, it's just one of the fun Doc Holiday stories yes. that there's no proof for it, and it certainly didn't happen in Prescott, Arizona. <laughs> well, uh, but it it did it did motivate uh, something uh, made Doc decide that he was uh, Wyatt Earp goes to Dodge City and, and there's he goes opportunities. To Do Dodge City and they left from there, and you know the uh, the the story about Ed Bailey, uh, in which uh, Doc pulls a knife from and and and. Uh, uh, stabs him and kills him um, if, it, if he was using the the HB <laughs> it was a, he would it wouldn't have he been would, it wouldn't have been, been a stab that no. would have been a he'd have, he'd have slashed him yeah exactly <coughs> which is uh, but um, the story of Ed Bailey is always finished by saying having Kate Rescue. and Doc, who knew nothing about the country, Kate knew more about the countryside than he did. Yeah. Tearing across open countryside for to hundreds, Dodge, of, miles hundreds to Dodge of miles City. to Dodge City. Indian infested wilderness to Dodge yeah. City. 
So, but what I mean, what actually happened is they went, they took the wagon road west and went to Sweetwater, and then from Sweetwater north to. Uh, by stagecoaches, because there were regular stagecoach stage lines. Coach. So it doesn't sound like somebody who was running from having cut off somebody's head yeah. very much. Well, let's leave them there, and we're going to move on to Dodge City next, okay. where the adventure really takes off. Mm -hmm.